guys, today we're going to have a look at the uh, Libra 900 model. We're going to try and add a few of the, the little uh, linear actuators to the to replace the plastic cylinders here. So to make the linear actuator, it's going to be pretty much the same as the the half pipe trailer. So we're going to use another brass standoff, one of these screw motors. So this is a 30 RPM one, so it's pretty slow. But uh, we'll see how how it works for this. It might be slow, but it, it'll probably make the arm pretty strong. So we'll be drilling that out, treading a, a piece of uh, nail for the bar here. So we'll you know tread a section, put a hole through the end of the end of the nail, and we should be able to screw it in and out. Unlike the half pipe trailer, our nail isn't going to need a hard stop on this side because the arm can only go this far so we just need to make the threaded section longer than this here so that it doesn't pop out so we want it probably about back to here somewhere so that way we can uh, screw it out but we wouldn't have been able to put a hard stop on this side anyway because we need to put the eye on this side so we need to drill the hole through here for this uh, little bar here to join it to the arm so we couldn't have, it wouldn't have been possible for us to put a hard stop on that end and still have the hole on this side. So that's the plan. I'm going to start with replacing this cylinder here. And my plan is to mount these motors uh, using the holes for these uh, fake cylinders. I'm going to remove them and I'm going to add some copper wire to the motor here put a little uh, eyepiece so that I can connect that to the to the bar that is through here holding the back of this cylinder in so we're going to connect our motor up on the top here and have our screw mechanism running down to here now the reason for that is that um, it's going to be easy to do in the first place but also it's going to be quite easy to change later on so I haven't I wouldn't I won't have made any huge modifications to the model simply by adding these motors in here and here whereas if I was to put them into the middle of the arm here they would be you know I'd be having to expand the arm a bit it'd be a little bit messy but uh, if we put it on the top here we can always change it later if a smaller version of this motor comes along or something like that so it should be pretty simple build and we'll get to it the, the only tricky part is for this one I'm going to have to remove this hump in the arm here because I'm going to need the motor to go around about there somewhere to, uh, to connect to this connect to this cylinder you see like um, if we have our motor connected there it's going to have to cut into that hump there so we're going to be intersecting the hump here and uh, you see it's it's pretty small, you know. There's not much space for the motors to go in that way into the arm. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure putting the motors on top is the best way to go. So, the first thing I'll do is uh, get a brass standoff ready that will uh, will allow us to make this movement here. I need to drill a hole through this. I also want to uh, make some sort of section in this uh, output shaft of the motor because with the John Deere model for the link mechanism I found that when the motor was getting tight it was pulling the brass standoff down off the output shaft so I'm going to have to put a notch or something into this output shaft so that our brass standoff can't move once it's on the motor ok so I have the first little part done I drilled the hole through and uh, tapped and put our screw through it, it's an M2 screw and I have cut a section out of the output shaft, it's just here kind of hard to see on the camera there but oh dear, it's a little bit easier there I've cut this section out so that I can put it on and tighten the screw into that place so that it can't come out so now our 
screw mechanism is fixed in place so no matter what we're trying to pull with our uh, boom here this shouldn't come off it's more likely that we'll break the plastic boom than pull this off so the next thing to do is to make our little uh, threaded bar for the other end of our screw mechanism and we should be able to screw the bucket in and out then like I done with the screw mechanism on the half pipe trailer I'm going to take another nail and thread the section to the correct length for this screw mechanism here and then I'll cut it off and drill a hole through the nail here so that I can put this bar through it well, here's the screw mechanism built however if we take a look at the bar this is the bar that came out of the top of the cylinder here the pin is much bigger than our, our nail that we threaded so we have to be a little bit more creative we'll try solder a little bit of copper around the pin here and solder it to the end of our threaded bar and hopefully that will give us a nice little mechanism or a nice little end to our screw mechanism that will fit through here to connect to our little bar here so this bar goes through here somewhere okay so I've added a little eyepiece to the end of our cylinder here so now we can connect to our little uh, connection bar here I suppose and uh, screw it in and out so I'll just tidy this up a little bit, a little bit square edges on it so I might just uh, file those down into a nicer little curve and we should be able to then fit that to the excavator and uh, give it a go so there's our old cylinder and our new cylinder so one last little thing that I needed to do was to file a little piece out of this section because our new cylinder is a little thicker than our old cylinder so there's only about a millimeter or two out of here just to let our new cylinder in and that just slots in there like that now and we have no problem moving the bucket now so next thing is to hook up our motor and test it out Okay, so we have it all fixed up now and uh, the last thing that we need to do is to uh, connect this motor to the pin in here and we need to cut away the section here to let the motor in but just to show you like I said at the start of the video this is a very slow motor we could probably do with getting the 60 rpm motor but uh, I'll just show you it's very very slow So it would be a long time waiting on this motor to uh, either open or close our bucket. So this motor is good to 6 volts. I've been using 3.7 here. So I've got this uh, U-back here and that should give us a, a 6 volt or that should let us regulate our 7.4 volt battery down to 6 volt so let's try that see how fast that is So that's a little bit faster, but still maybe not fast enough. So the next thing to do would be to get the 60 RPM version of this motor. I don't have any at the minute, so I'll have to order those. And in a follow-up video, I'll have the 60 RPM motor doing the same task. And it will probably end up that we use 60 RPM motors for all the motors on this model. So make sure and subscribe so you don't miss out on that. 
If you liked that video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, if you have any questions, post them either here or on the forum. And that's everything for today, so thanks very much for watching.